As the 2016 presidential race gears up, candidates are getting all of their political ducks in a row, talking, listening, all these other things that make people so interested in them. But one piece of the campaign puzzle some may not put enough emphasis on personal appearance. Welcome to Mid... No, I'm not running. Welcome to Midpoint, founder and CEO of Recitals Hair Care, a master stylist and colorist with more than 20 years' experience helping celebrities, politicians, and regular folks look and feel their best. William Murphy joins us here in the studio. Bill, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. You work with politicians, indeed. <sighs> I work and with how, everybody, yeah. how important is it, though? Because let's look, let's look at, at Mitt Romney, for instance. There's a guy who's got that perfect hair working. He does. People, it doesn't make a difference who you are. People think something when they see that head of hair, don't they? Well, they do. Um, and I think history has repeated itself in that realm. Uh, going back to you know, John F. Kennedy, had a very stately look. Perfect you know, you hair. look at Mitt Romney, he is the new version. Even if you look into, obviously, your field, you look at Anderson Cooper, you know, I think it speaks volumes in the way that people perceive you. And again, perception's reality. It's your first impression that makes a lasting impression. So I think, you know, some of these candidates out there look great, and some of them, well, the opposite is true. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's look at a couple of examples. Hillary Clinton, what's your example when you see Mrs. Clinton? <sighs> wow, you know, um, <laughs> I, I guess, that was bad. <laughs> yes, I, I think the way that I've explained it in the past, and you know, I've been called on very recently to you know approach these topics, um, was she looks like a thrift store person, like a candidate almost. Um, you know, unfortunately, with this new look of hers, obviously she looks worn, she looks dated. Look Does she need to go back to that look on the left right there, which is more stately? In well, ways. I don't know if it's possible exactly, but you know, I think what I looked at is that with her age and with the way she presents herself, channel Meryl Streep in the Devil Wears Prada. It's a power look. It's something that you know really makes a statement all its own. And you can take someone who is more mature, someone who has been through the system for a long time and maybe you know worn and ravaged, and have something that really exudes power. Do we have to say to some people though that you got to act your age? Sometimes it just catches up. It does. It does. I agree 100. percent You know, and I think that goes with some of the other candidates on the market, specifically the men. You know, I think that a lot of times guys think they can get away with um, nothing. You take Ted Cruz as an example. Um, I referred to him as a supercuts guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just look at the face. You know, it, it doesn't exude the confidence. Put Mitt Romney's split screen with that, and you'd go, "Wow, I couldn't even believe." But that why do we put so much emphasis, though, in the hair? What does it do? I think of the beauty industry. It's a trillion dollar a year business. I mean, everybody wants to look younger, better. You know, I mean, it's it's the age of maximizing what you have and exuding your youth and uh, I guess what people see is what they believe. All right, let's let's look at another. Okay, so we're looking at the, the candidates right here. Uh, Carly Fiorina who is in the upper right right there. She would seem to have that that stately businesswoman sort of look. She did. And I, I think did. She did. I mean, this is probably a better picture of her, but you know, she has very very fine hair. Um, with the bob she's wearing, the last few photos I've seen her have looked very worn and let me just preface it by saying, you know, I feel for her plight. The look the, the other look, the shorter look, I think represented her better, but as a cancer survivor, she obviously has had challenges, and I do quite a bit of work with the American Cancer Society and cancer treatment centers. And with that being said, you know, I think there are challenges, but there are ways to improve the look and give her something that might be a little bit more approachable and youthful. What about Rand Paul? I mean, he looks like a frat boy to me. You know, he's got the curly <laughs> stuff on top. I mean, there's a variety of products and things on the market you can use to control that hair. And he just looks a little goofy looking. I mean, I don't think it's even symmetrical. I mean, you know, you look at a man, you look at Kennedy, and he's got this jawline, you know, whether the father or the son. He just doesn't resonate that. You know, the haircut's not balanced. It's kind of curly and fuzzy, and, you know. Would it be fair to say that uh, from a broadcaster's standpoint, it's always important to have really good hair, especially when you're on the set and talking to a hair guy? I, I think it is. I, th I think you're hitting it. So, I mean, you, you think so? Absolutely. You think you think it's got it, and it's all real. By the way, isn't that important too <laughs> to make sure that none of it has been artificially enhanced? I, I think that you know you're 100 percent correct in that, but I think you know we do the best what we have. You know. But you would say that that some people are really blessed with a great head of hair. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Absolutely. 100. Okay, okay. I, I, I wanted to make sure that came out here because <laughs> very few are, and I wanted to make sure that that I got that because no about I got that on tape. Just in case you're wondering now, <laughs> it is important. Bill, thanks so much for coming in. Listen, thank you for your We got to get you with some of these people because you're right. Some of the hair looks bad. I agree. We got to get you with that. All right. See, we're getting ready for 2016 and everything. It's all about image. Real. Join me as we begin a new direction here on Midpoint with Telling It Like It Is, the generation that deserves our close attention, and we have the name for them. Telling It Like It Is is next. <laughs>